Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meat Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. And this time I'm not left on my own by Donnie. <laughs> yep, I'm with you. I'm back again. Uh, that that was a rough one for me, man. I, I, I like to have my co-host with me. It was kind of tough. I, I spent a lot of time trying trying to get everything down last week. <laughs> yeah, was, you did good, though. So for your first time on your own, you did good. Probably better than I'll do, and I have to do mine on my own. I have never been on my own in my 10-plus years of podcasting, so damn it, Donnie, don't do that again. <laughs> it wasn't by choice. <laughs> Joining us on this episode is a young man I met a couple of weeks ago, Battle on the Border, Party Mike. Party Mike, what is going on, my friend? Not a whole lot today, man. Just nice, relaxing Sunday. Uh, had a show yesterday. Uh, yeah, just nice, relaxing day. You want to chill out the rest of the night, probably. Now, were you wrestling with APW yesterday? Yes, I was. Oh, so you were out in front of the Lowe's. We were out at uh, at CSL, one of our sponsors, CSL. We were out the parking lot right out there, and uh, outside show got a little got a little sunny to tell by the forehead. <laughs> now I heard about the, I heard about the show yesterday. Uh, one of mine and Donnie's friends called me up. He goes, "Hey Jim, if you want to see a free show, APW is doing a show out by my store." Yep, right outside. Just uh, right outside, Jim. Everything kind of it was a quick setup too. Honestly, I all. It's a good good time. So how did the show go overall? Went pretty good. We were the uh, the curtain jerker out there. Um, me and uh, my trainer, Jay West, uh, he's been acting a little, uh, a little weird lately. We uh, tried to, try, try, try to get the dance out there. He wouldn't dance with me or anything. <laughs> trying to party, trying to have a good time. And then he got angry. I was dancing with the rap, dancing with the crowd. Yeah. You're talking about a guy like Party Mike, you got to dance a little bit. That's what I was trying to I mean, he wasn't listening. He was uh, he was being a stick in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's start at the beginning, Mike. Um, I know you're a partier. You're a dude. You love to party. But what really got you started in this grand thing we call professional wrestling? So when I was... When I was uh, a lot younger, I had a good friend of mine who's also at APW. He's traveled to other places. He's also at Battle Border. He was, um, you know, because Jaden, uh, me and Justin, Xavier, um, been friends since God, yay, tall. And um, we wrestled each other like, in the basement, just doing stupid stuff as we would watch WWE on, t- on TV and stuff like that. And, uh, no, like, I, I, you know, like, I, I, no, eventually work took over and I went to college for a little bit. And then, uh, you know, college, the, the party time, right? And <laughs> he got me into it. And then, you know, while I started to train, I did refereeing actually for about a year, about a year or so. And I fell just in love with everything with wrestling. Every single bit, being the show, well, whether I'm just a fan, you know, just hanging out, having a good time, doing commentary with you or in the, in the middle of the square circle. I, I just love every single little part of it ever since I've been young. Well, you know, Mm -hmm. you mentioned doing commentary with me, and I got to admit, it was a lot of fun. That was my debut for Battle on the Border, and, you know, we we were just kind of thrown into it, and uh, we played it off great. I mean, it was just – hopefully they'll air it with all the commentary because me me and Party Mike, we had fun with it. We were were picking on one particular referee (laughs) a lot. (laughs) Uh, I'm not going to mention any names, Danny Stammer. (laughs) Um, uh, we, we just had a blast with it. You know, we went with it. We, we were both doing kind of play by play and commentary together and it was a great show. I I thoroughly enjoyed that show. No, honestly, every part of it, like each match had its little thing, you know, had its, had a story to it, had, you know, some background behind it. Um, even the matches that didn't, you know, had, had that big, uh, had a big pop, especially when the crowd made their debut and uh, the lights went off. The crowd just was ecstatic. Even when the lights were all pulling the phone down and everything, it was a good time. It was honestly a great, 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 great time. 
and you know it was a testament to the uh to the fans because when the lights went out all these cell phone lights came on all over the place it was like it was like they were waiting for bray wyatt or something there were so many lights going on there yeah just to keep the, just to keep the match going and to the competitors credit they never stopped the match when the lights went out you know, to quote myself from that, you know, I don't know what's happening. I think somebody's getting hurt in the middle of that ring. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we, we couldn't see much of what was going on from where we were, but the broadcast position, but it, it was amazing. And finally the lights came back on and you know, the crown, the crowns are forced to be reckoned with. Oh yeah, they absolutely are. They're, they're, they're killing it. So who were some of your, I use the term heroes loosely, but when you were growing up, you watched WWE. I mean, who did you look up to at that point in time? You know, honestly, some of like the bigger names that most people say, you know, it's, it's ones that I've always resonated with very easily. So, you know, like I've loved Taker. Taker has been one of my easily favorites. Um, you know, then you got Stone Cold, just, just, his, just how he talks and his, his old demeanor, you know, he when he walked in, you knew Stone Cold walking in. There ain't nobody else coming in besides him. Um, Shawn Michaels, I've always loved me some, some Shawn Michaels, great worker, great inside the ring, great everything. Um, my favorite time of him was actually when he was, when he was with DX. Uh, the, just how much fun they had. It, was, it looked like genuine, just fun in the middle of that ring. So. Uh, is that what you uh, to aspire to every time you have a match? What was that? Sorry, cut out a little bit right there. Is that something you aspire to every time you have a match? Uh, oh, my gosh. If I'm not having fun, what's the point, right? Let's, let's have some fun. Let's dance. Let's party. Let's, let's – uh... <laughs> yeah. But the question is, do you party too much? Now, you got an opponent in there. That – that you got a little bit of give and take. You got you to gotta, gotta line up the opponent correctly. So, you know, you got somebody who wants a – who's angry at me for whatever reason, you got to be careful with it. So like uh, me and Carson Drake went back and forth for a while, which he was the main event for that battle on the border show at APW. We went back and forth for a while. And, you know, I tried to try to have a little bit of, you know, some fun with it and everything. And uh, he was not having it. So by the end of our last match, I was not having it with him either. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, all business, no fun, all business by that last time as he was just pure disrespect after the bell rung, clocking me in the back of the head with a piece of the ring, actually. And not that was not fun. <laughs> and you got to do something about that megaphone. I'm about done with that. Oh, my gosh, that megaphone. You can hear it from miles, <laughs> miles away. Uh, you know, it's funny because during that battle on the border show, um, he was running around with a megaphone. He yelled right in this little boy's face sitting next to my wife. And instead of, she went to cover his ears, accidentally covered his eyes. <laughs> you know, I would do both, honestly, cover the ears and the eyes. I mean, him walking by. I mean, I, I don't know what she was thinking, but her intentions were good, but the poor kid got the full blast of that megaphone. <laughs> At least he didn't see the, the megaphone busting his eardrums. That's... <laughs> Fun fact, actually, he uh, his megaphone used to be like, super, super tiny. Like it wasn't. Um, he upgraded, got that upgrade. I hate every part of it, but it used to be like a little small. I think it was like a red one. Um, it was we. It was at a show we were in Pennsylvania. I want to say, yeah, it was in Pennsylvania. He was a, it was an itty bitty one, not loud at all. His voice was louder than the megaphone itself. <laughs> That's actually pretty even funnier, really. <laughs> it was. It was actually hilarious. That, uh, he had that when I was still refereeing. And I remember refereeing some of his matches, and uh, I, I did not. I was not having it then either. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk more about you. I mean, you know, you, you've been wrestling for um, how long now? Since last September now. Okay. Uh, debut match was actually I was slated to referee that match went out you know, normal stuff and uh, D Chris Allen came out which we also saw also at Battle in the Water um, one of the APW guys came over and uh, he said well I'm, I can't wrestle Prima Donnie and uh, you know referee why don't you do it 
So that was my debut match against the, at the time, um, heavyweight champion. Uh, put my fair fight in. By that point, <laughs> was not ready for Donnie. He should be pull this up. <laughs> for being just fully honest with each other. <laughs> um, but from that point on, no, I've been wrestling since last September. Okay. Uh, What's your win-loss record like? I want to say we're about even right now. I think actually, I think we're about five, about 500 right now, about half, right down the middle. Yeah. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. I feel like it's, God, I don't even know the exact number off the top of my head right now. Well, that's pretty good for a rookie. I would say, yeah. So, Donnie, any questions for Party Mike? Yeah. Um, from transitioning from ref to wrestler, what was that like and what was the most challenging for you, besides being just thrown to the wolves like you did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thrown to the wolves pretty good. No, um, the biggest thing that helped was, honestly, ring positioning, knowing where, like, how, where I got to be, you know, what, you know, how to transition from point A to point B. Uh, that was the biggest thing, but the um, I was over honestly as a as a ref. Everybody loved you know, ref Mike coming out because I was very animate. You know, I'm the same way now. I'm still a very animate guy. So cry, I got I always got cute pops whenever I came out, especially when I Iron Man a lot of shows. Um, the biggest thing though was was um, God from referee to wrestler, just. Uh, and I don't know, there was a few things to overcome as far as that was just, you know, the the people looking at me as still as a referee from that point. I guess that was probably the biggest thing was to show them, hey, I'm here to have fun and have a party. I'm no longer right down the middle no more. I'm ready to party with Party Mike. I don't know about you guys. That was probably my biggest thing, I would say. Mm -hmm. Now, were you trained as a wrestler before the refereeing, like as to become a ref? Yeah, um, so yeah, I, I originally trained to just right. That was just the main goal was just to wrestle. Um, there was a show that needed my help out in Indiana, and they said, do you, can, you, can you go get some ref referee clothes? And I was like, sure, I can I'll find something to figure it out. They showed me a couple like a week or so before and refereed as I was training until debut. Nice. So I think I trained, I've been I trained like a year or so before. Yeah, about, about a year. About a year or so before, then debuted in September. Good deal. Okay. And uh, do you still enjoy refereeing? It was it was fun. It was um, it was fun. I enjoy you know wrestling more, of course. Though uh, I like being able to be slam some people around. Or <laughs> 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 um, but no, nothing against refereeing. Like, I, so I have some really good referee friends still, especially like. FGW's uh, big ref Steve, love him, good guy. Um, yeah, Ryan at APW, he also does Bow on a Border. Um, I I love, but referees always are some good guys. But no, I, it was a fun time. Okay. You know, Donnie, we should probably sometime in the future get him in a match with uh, James the Baker Hickey. No, oh, yeah. That'd be good. That'd be a dance off, huh? That'd be the whole match. That'd just be. That'd be hey, it'd be just dancing out there. I'll probably <laughs> be doing a dance down out there. I don't know if you want any of these moves or anything, right? <laughs> uh, so, Battle on the Border, Legend of the Squared Circle, APW. Who was your trainer? We haven't asked. We haven't addressed. We haven't addressed that yet. Yeah. So I've been trained by Tim Lutz, Tom Sharp, and Jay West. Okay. Um, I just I just worked Jay West actually that was the last show that we um had um we had Tim Lutz and Tom Sharp were the other two former DJ Tom Sharp that's where I went all my dance moves from all right lightning Tim Lutz so. yes so, so some good company to be trained by there so oh absolutely absolutely they're mentored by you know I hit a bunch of others like I can't I'm not going to exclude anybody. Everybody's always showing me something, right? So, um, like, uh, LSC's, um, yes, Bound of Order, he's been, he's been everywhere. He's the current Rise champion at APW. Uh, led, uh, Chris Lebetter, somebody else has also shown me a lot of stuff. Um, and the list just goes on and on and on. I take everything I can, as long as much as I can. And, and who has been, who you would consider your best mentor? Gosh, 
I would say that good, like, like that good group of like the main uh, three that I of trainers would probably be like that big. It's like I took so much individually from each person so as far as like the technical aspect. And you know, I've stolen a lot from like Jay, uh, Jay West, um, very, very, very technical wrestler. Uh, Tom, you know, he's learned some big stuff, but much like footwork type of deal. And of course, the dancers, you can't, can't ever look at dancers, especially, you know, Party Mike, right? right. <clears throat> Tim was the first person to show me anything going wrestling, though. So I have to give him all the credit of any, any kind of fundamentals of anything. And uh, how did you come up with the gimmick? It was a fun, <laughs> it was a fun idea to try to come up with that because it was this was not the original idea whatsoever. <laughs> um, there were so many different ideas thrown out um, leading up until that time, and a um, couple of you know, a couple a handful of face, but that was the end goal. Where they say we want you a face. You're 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 a good loving guy. Everybody just. You smile and laugh, people just smile and laugh with you. So um, the original idea was something similar to like Dusty. Uh, you know, like I, you know, like the work, like, like, like the man's man, like everybody knows who he is, right? I mean, he's, he, he's the guy, right? Um, like that working class type of, type of gimmick. And then uh, slowly they're like, well, Mike's kind of a fun guy. Like he's a fun guy. Let's do some fun with it. And then party, and then everybody loves me at a party, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, yeah. you know, the way you can just drink a couple of beers with you, like uh, like Austin. Yes, I've been trying to, you know, I've been trying to get sponsored by Mike's Hard, and they won't reach back out to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. I've reached, I've emailed them four times now, and I follow their thing on Facebook. So every time they post, I get a notification. I real quick just type something in real quick to see if they'll respond back to me. And I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting I'm shooting nothing right now. <laughs> keep keep at it you never know man yep i'll be persistent <laughs> yeah. yes as the gimmick grows and as you grow they might go hey we need to sponsor this guy exactly that or if you if you can even see the shirt now i got like a shirt that looks similar like waffle house in a way so it's like very very uh somewhere if they if waffle house sees me at all um you know my you can find me on facebook <laughs> <laughs> Now, how far are you looking to go with this? Are you just along for the ride, or do you have a goal in mind of you know going to the to the WWE or something like that? Or what's your goal? As far as wrestling will take me, I will I will push that another step forward. I I, I love everything with wrestling. I, it's it's my life. It consumes everything I do. Honestly, um, like I just before I logged into here, I was just got back from the store, and I had a couple of people come up to me like, "Oh, I love your shirt," and we started talking, and they're like wrestling fans and they're like oh my gosh we'll come to a show here's everything here's the stuff um i love that i just love i, I love it i wanted to take as far as it will take me so if it's not signed you know it's not signed it, that's fun fine with that but if it is signed you know hey my, i'm on facebook instagram <laughs> find me <laughs> Did 2020 take its toll on your fitness? Well, body slam the pandemic and get back in shape with WrestleFit. This innovative program combines all the fitness regiments you'll need to reach your goals. The WrestleFit workout will bring strength training, cardio, and the world of professional wrestling together in a fun, new, and exciting way. Have yourself a blast working out with dumbbells, kettlebells, slam balls, ropes, tires, and an 18-foot full-size wrestling ring. The WrestleFit workout isn't just for pro wrestlers. The WrestleFit workout is for everybody. At the NOW Training Center, you can pursue your fitness goals and learn how to train like a professional wrestler without all the bumps, bruises, and slams with the WrestleFit workout. Go to www.newohiowrestling.com slash training for more information or stop by the NOW Training Center at 625 Eastgate Parkway, Blacklick, Ohio, 43004, Unit 6137. I would, you know, knowing you is, uh, I don't know you greatly, but uh, with the time we spent together, I think you're the type of person that's going to carry this gimmick as far as you can. And I would say for you, my suggestion to you would be, would to be, you know, aspire for something, aspire to get signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just don't sit back on your laurels and say, hey, okay, I'm good not being signed aspire for that man i mean you've got the right personality you've got a good gimmick 
keep building on that. You keep doing it. People are going to start paying attention. No, that's the goal. I mean, I mean, what's the point of doing anything if you don't want to get better at it? Right. Um, you know, like um, I'll get my film immediately as soon as the match happens and I'll go in the back and I'll sit there in the locker room and watch it like immediately. I know some people go, oh, that's crazy, man. Live the hype, have some fun with it. No, I want to, my goal is to get better at what I do and I'm not complacent with it. If, if I have a good match, that's awesome. What can I do to get a great match? What can I do to have a five-star match? What can I do to be the match that gets, that gets shared by, you know, sports center and says, Oh my gosh, look at that crazy, you know, whatever. Right. right. Uh, I, I wrestling is the goal. And you know, however I can do, that's awesome. I mean, I want to, I mean, I do want to get signed, of course. Right. Oh, Who does not Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you haven't been in the ring very long, as you stated. Um, for uh, like all the new trainees and the guys that's you know, guys and gals that's just getting into the business, what's a good piece of advice that you learned that uh, you could pass on to them if they're listening to uh, to help them, you know, get in the get in there, get their feet on the ground, and get them going? I guess. Yeah, um, two kind of real big things that stuck with me when I first started training. Um, one of them was given to me by one of my few mentors, um, one of my mentors, uh, Tom Sharp. He, you know, we talked one of my first handful of practices and he, you know, I was talking about, you know, how my shoot job was like, I can't, you know, I can't make every single practice with a couple I might have to miss or show up late, whatever it may be. And he was like, Hey, until wrestling pays the bills, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a hobby that can pay and, and until it does pay some bills or it pays for something. Right. Which, you know, starting now, well, right now it's a it's a it's a hobby that pays and that's one thing the other thing is um you know don't beat yourself up too bad you know not everybody's perfect not everybody's perfect at all you know you can train for you could have been wrestling for 50 years and you could still have a have a mess up i have a botch you can have something that happens most of these botches you'll see like i'm like, i think there's a it's botch of media half those guys have been wrestling forever and most of the matches are actually really good <laughs> Yep. <laughs> if you go back and find them so don't beat yourself up too bad um that was actually most recent i got from one of my other trainers you know because i was beating myself over a match i had i was like man i should have done this i should have done this oh i could have you know threw that in there that would have been way better and he's like man don't beat yourself up you're you did good it was very good what you put out there All right yep. so let's think now you told me before we went on the air that you're not a big horror fan. Yeah, now, I never got into it. Super, I was super young. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I've watched a couple of things. Okay. But I, I, I can't even tell you what they were off the top of my head. It's something that's been thrown on when I've been somewhere. Okay. Well, see, a lot of people know the 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 big ones like Freddie and Michael Myers and Jason, uh, things like that. Have you seen any of those films? I have. I have. It's been a little bit since I've watched them, but yes, I have. Okay. So you're not the blood and guts slasher kind of guy. You just... If it's on, I mean, I'm not going to go my way and be like, oh my God, who's changed it? But like, um, <laughs> it's something that I've, like, I've always been more of like a like a comedy movie guy, honestly. I love laughing. I love having a good time. But um there's, I've seen a couple. Like the one that I remember the most, I think is like the I think it's called the the ring. Mm -hmm. The ring. That's that's one that I remember the, like, the absolute most. That's uh, I watched that. That's like my first ever like more horror ish movie. Okay, mm -hmm. not a bad one to start with. <laughs> no, not a bad one at all. Um, you know, it's funny. I just saw on some news today that there's going to be a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. I just saw I just saw that on, and I was sitting here waiting for the thing to start. I was scrolling through. I was like, what the heck is that? It's called Blood and Honey. Uh, and he's even gonna have Piglet with him. Nice. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. I wonder who, who's who's making that? Who's making that? Not Disney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the copyright's been released, so anybody can do it now. It's by yeah, it's free use now. It's by past like the time of the app. Yeah, oh, they, man. they didn't waste no time either. They did it immediately. <laughs> and I just want to watch the movie just because of that. I mean, Winnie the Pooh in a horror movie. I mean, come on. Mm. 
I might go out of my way and watch that one just because of the fact of that, honestly, because like I would never have thought that's yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's when it's different. Uh, but yeah, I was reading an article today and then it said Piglet's gonna be in there too. You might see Eeyore. It's just like I've got to see this. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to have a lot of eyes on them, so they better not screw it up. Yeah. I mean, you, you think about it, and, you know, growing up as kids, even it, um, as me as a child, even you as a child, um, Winnie the Pooh, always, a you know, the dumpy little bear that, you know, lives in the 100-acre wood with Christopher Robin and all his friends, and he eats honey and uh -huh. makes mistakes, you know, but now we're going to see a different side of Pooh. I think the thing I, as I was reading a little bit about it until until the uh, till the video started, well, it was um, I think Christopher Robin, Christopher Robin, was, yeah, he left them. I think was the story, and then they get hungry, and that's why they're going out and like attacking people or something like that along the lines of that. Okay, this is going to be. Interesting. I wonder how many characters are going to happen. I wonder if they're like throwing all these different characters from that, or if it's going to be like the couple few like, main ones. Well, I know they can't use Tigger yet. Oh, they can. Okay, so they. Oh. Tigger doesn't get released for a few more years into the free free domain. But Piglet's in there, Eeyore's in there, Owls in there. Hmm. So, Tigger will have his own horror film then when he gets released. Yeah, it's all the second <laughs> movie, part two of that. <laughs> the terrible thing about Tigger's. All right. <laughs> So see, they, there you go. You're laughing. That's fun, you know. Party, Mike. He's, yes, he's, exactly. Uh -huh. Party out of anything. <laughs> got to find some comedy in something, right? Got to laugh. You got to got to laugh about it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a funny idea, though. I love. I, I think they should they should do more stuff like that. Honestly, when the more stuff comes out in the public domain, um, that could mean there's how much hype that's got around it. I guarantee it's like a small, like indie promote, like, like a um, small like indie company that's doing it. So I guarantee more stuff that comes out, they'll probably start pushing more things like that because it gets a lot of press and people go, Oh, Winnie the Pooh horror. Like what's next. Uh -huh. So a horror movie. Um, I, I, I don't know if you can notice Donnie uh, over Donnie's shoulder there, but, you might guess he's a big Jason fan. You know, uh, I would, I would guess. Yeah, <laughs> venture to say, right? If he was a betting man, huh? yeah, I guess I'd throw a couple of books at it. <laughs> this is the same man that scares his granddaughter all the time. Mm -hmm. How well, it's starting and starting to reverse now. She's starting to jump at me a lot now. Right? <laughs> How old is she now? Uh, she'll be nine in July. Can't believe she's growing up fast. Yep. Um, yep. Actually, I got one, a new Chucky doll. I'm gonna try to hide in her bed, bedroom somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe under her pillow or by her pillow. When she wakes up, he's staring right at her or something. <laughs> I was there for her birthday a couple of years ago, and he wrapped up a Chucky doll in the good guy's box. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> She, she didn't see the humor in it. <laughs> no, she took one tear and took off. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you got to understand how twisted this man is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some people say I got a screw loose here and there. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah it's fine. I, mean, we all, I think we all do in the end. It's, it's all good. Oh, yeah. Andy, I, get paid to, I get paid to hit the ground, right? All right. <laughs> And on top of it, he runs a family-friendly wrestling promotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's my, that's, the, that's the other Donnie. That's the other personality. I have, you know, I have a couple in there. <laughs> like, Two-face type of deal. You got the yeah. <laughs> scaring, <laughs> scaring daughter, mm -hmm. family-friendly on the other offer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the way it goes. I say she's a, she's actually getting into it now and stuff, and she's been wanting to go to haunted houses, but I'm like, yeah, you can't yet, and you're not ready yet, and so yeah, like I say, she'll be. I think she'll be a horror fan. My grandson's the same way. I don't get to scare him as much, but he likes to watch scary movies and stuff too. So 
because my daughter, his his mom, she's a big horror fan, and she does like haunt haunted house makeup and stuff like that. So she's been around the industry with us and all that. So that's super cool. Uh, I went to one haunted house when I was like way like way too young to ever go inside one. Way too young. My dad was like, "Yeah, sure, I'm fine. You'll have a good time." I went in. I was terrified. Holy crap! I was terrified. So out the person in front of me, I know I did who it was. But I grabbed their bag just pure death grip in my left hand anybody who came by just kept swinging like this i was like get away from me i was, I was a little kid screaming <laughs> i walked out i kissed the ground in front of me i was terrible oh, it was horrible it was a horrible <laughs> he said i haven't been back since <laughs> i was way too young to ever go in there way too young. my dad i don't know what he was thinking if my, my dad can hear this why were you thinking that <laughs> Yeah, that's how I got introduced to horror films. My dad kind of forced me to go to a horror film and I went in kicking and screaming and fell in love with it. At the, by the time I ran out, I was excited and ready to watch another one. But Party Mike's all about the good time. <laughs> good times. So Donnie's going to drop a question on you now, Party Mike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a question we ask everybody we talk to, and there's no right or wrong answer. We just like to get in the minds of the people that we talk to and see if they're twisted as we are, or, you know, and how, how uh, their mind works. So the question is, you are the main serial killer in your own horror film. What is your go-to kill? Or your finisher. Yeah, what would be your finisher? Huh. Go to kill meaning like a yeah. What would you be known for? Like Freddy with the claws and Jason with the machete. Oh, okay. And it doesn't have to be a weapon. Just what would be your go to kill? Your finisher that you'd be known for? Actually, um, I think my go to kill thing would be like different, like very uniquely used weapons. Um, for example, give me two seconds. <laughs> I'm a weapons collector. I have like random and weird weapons. So I, this is like a random trident I have. Nice. Uh, so I would say more unique weapons. <laughs> right. <laughs> Something that you would not think that somebody would use in a slasher film. So I don't, or a slasher or horror film. Uh, something that like would stand out very, very, very much. So let's go with trident. That sounds like a good one to use. Okay. Yeah. We've been doing this now for, we've been on, well, we have close to 150 episodes, um, and we've never gotten a duplicate answer, and that still stands. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, are you? I mean, when you use it, are you going to be dancing around when you use it to try to keep do, it? Do a little shimmy with it? And... <laughs> so cool. So, Mike, tell us where people can find out more about you, about Party Mike what you're doing, uh, social media promotions, any upcoming shows, things like that. Yeah. So as far as social media, uh, Facebook's the big one. That's where I'm probably the most active on. Um, I also have Twitter, Instagram. I have a TikTok I just made recently. I must start posting on there more often, put some more matches and stuff. YouTube, every match I work will be thrown on YouTube. I'm working on uploading one right now. Just got to put a couple of things together, um, adding through. Next show I will be at will be June twelfth. It will be it's a Sunday show, smoking water barbecue. Um, that's the next show after that. We got a couple more lined up. So that same week we have another one on the eighteenth as well. Um, I have most social media that I should have TikTok, and Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram's the other one I was thinking of. And, and what are your handles on that? Is it just Party Mike? Or? The find me on Facebook. It's just my uh, party. Mike Howard. Uh, Instagram is life of the party underscore Mike Howard. Twitter should be the same. TikTok is the same as well. And then YouTube just life of the party. Mike Howard as well. Right on. Well, Mike, it's been a great uh, interview having you on the show here. Uh, love to have a guy that likes to party. Woo yes. <laughs> Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Uh, maybe we can do some more commentary work. If you're not wrestling, if you are wrestling, then I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out from there. right? <laughs> uh, Donnie, any last questions? No, I say, I think we covered, covered a good amount of it. So, uh, yeah, it was nice talking to you and stuff. So 
Absolutely. I look for look forward to hearing, you know, coming back on or even coming up to see a background to the new Ohio at one point as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, with that being said, <clears throat> excuse me. I am Meat Hook Jim with Donnie Hoover and our special guest, Party Mike Howard. This is the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Party on, Wayne. Party See you guys. On. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets Facebook.com backslash Wrestle Horror, Instagram at Wrestle Horror, Twitter at Wrestle Horror. On YouTube at the Wrestle Horror Channel. And you can also find us on our website, www.wrestlehorror.com.